Welcome to Mondo Agor on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Today I'm just going to be ranting about you know, how to spread the idea of libertarianism, or voluntarism as we know it. My rant went a little bit long, so I don't have the time after the podcast, unfortunately, to talk about the music. But it's by a guy or a group called Broke for Free, and the album's layers. I used tracks one through nine, which is almost the entire album. I didn't include the last one. Didn't have time for it. Um, but I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Thanks for listening. See you on the other side. There are many different arguments for Virginia. And over the last seven or eight years, over long it is, I've been kind of pushing this message in my own way. I've gone through, I think, all of them. All of my The, uh, On the Rothbardian economic arguments, the egalitarian arguments, the, the against me argument. I've argued a lot of historical points with people. I mean, if you're arguing from a place of fact, really easy to argue for libertarianism. It's in the way we see libertarianism, not the compromise, conservative, you know, small or Republican libertarians. Who you are. But when you're not arguing for the state at all, you, you lose all those contradictions. And, uh, I remember when it happened, and I'm pretty sure many of you remember too. Like the moment you really understand, you reach, you know, the alcoholic moment of clarity. The uh, what you know, I've heard Adam Kokesh call the uh, libertarian mind melt. The point where you understand, you see all the world. Everywhere you look, you see a government atrocity causing something bad, holding something back. Think of the price of houses and cars and college. You think of the quality of our clothes, of our, again, of our cars, of our education, the quality of our food, any problem. And if you look at it, and if you've had this, this moment, after you've, you've transcended and you've reached what some have called, and I believe it, Adam Kokesh has called this too, the Zen libertarianism, when it almost becomes a spiritual aspect. You know, you see freedom, you see choices, and you see the state. have come to this sort of understanding, but I believe, I used to, you know, I'm saying I used to do all those arguments all the time, internet, in person, it didn't matter, I'd talk to anybody about libertarianism, like that. I wasn't, you know, aggressive towards people, that was never my style, but it, you know, I, I came to understand 
the only way to convert people over to libertarianism was not to force it on them. It's completely contradictory to the nature of libertarianism. So why would you do it in the first place? But what I mean is you can't force people to understand the truth and how the world works. You can't force people to understand that libertarianism is the right way and the correct way. And I know that it is the correct way just because understanding nonviolence is it. You know, spontaneous order. That is, you know, the quality, the thread that really holds life together. Human interaction. Human action. A lot of people, they don't see it that way. They see in us versus them. When you first become a libertarian, at least for me, it was easy to make people happy. You, know, you start talking to a communist or something, and or somebody that calls themselves a communist, that they hate capitalism. Just talk to them for a while, and it becomes clear that they don't know what capitalism is. Or they're using the wrong definition and if you get your definitions lined up if you talk to them and you say okay what do you mean by this and then you're like okay well if you mean this by this then what about this or you know if you that's what you actually mean then I would agree with you but you're using this definition wrong the government the state our societies have a split arguing amongst ourselves about stuff that doesn't matter This was the, the clear server saw, you know, making the economic argument. You can show them case after case where, you know, capitalism, true free market capitalism, has helped improve the world, the quality of life. And they don't want to believe it. And, and that doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if they believe. It doesn't matter if they understand economics, if they understand freedom from that perspective. What matters is that they understand the non-aggression principle and they realize why, why you support a free market because it's a you know free interaction. The problem is not with the freedom of association. It's not with people starting communes. It's not with people, you know, becoming syndicalists and starting to, you know, work in their own garages with, uh, you know, everybody in the community owning all the tools that are working out there. There's nothing wrong with that. That's really awesome. And if you talk to any sort of libertarian, like the American libertarians, what they would call the right or the libertarians, even though most of them aren't really right-wing at all. People that would consider themselves, you know, the voluntarians, not the uh, the left libertarians of, say, Europe or, say, Noam Chomsky. Those people are libertarians too. I don't know about Noam Chomsky. He believes in the state. I know that. He is just a statist pig. He hides. A lot of, you know, quote unquote left libertarians or left wing anarchists are actually statist. Black sheep. You know, the dangerous ones working with the shepherds or the coyotes take out everyone else. They don't might not know it. There's nothing wrong with having a communist and an artist, as long as that communism stays voluntary and you have a way out. The, the real problem with the way society is run today is you can't opt out. You know, the United States government claims me as its property. And that's, that's a problem. And people try to say, you know, no, they don't. They don't claim you as their property. You're a citizen of the United States. What does that mean? You know, I can't just get on a plane and go to, you know, anywhere in the world. You know, 
I can't get on the plane and go to the Middle East without a passport. I can't get into foreign countries. I couldn't get into like Northern Ireland or something without a passport, without their government saying it's okay and my government saying it's okay. And they got me using status language there. get away with that because people think that they are owned. And that's that's sad. You get people that don't understand that, aren't willing to see it. And and you think, you know, can you change these people if they don't want to change, if they don't see it. And really, they have to notice it before they can even begin to take the steps in the right direction to see you know, what real freedom means to the human species. To me, libertarianism is, you know, the true libertarianism, voluntarianism, is being able to look at the past and seeing what it really all actually means. You know, it's states fighting against states, people killing other people in the name of something, you know, God, government. Just excuse after excuse after excuse to violate the non aggression to defy spontaneous order, you know, true natural laws, none of this stuff is just written down by lawyers, like the real physics of the universe, I mean, the non-aggression principle, spontaneous order, that is as much part of existence as gravity, it's, it's real, it's tangible, and you can't grab it, but you can see it everywhere, you can look at stuff that we use daily, cell phones, you know, Computers. Even just over a short amount of time, you can see evolution, the way it happens. And how can you believe in evolution and not believe in spontaneous order? How do you not see the connection there? They are the exact same thing. They are you know, pieces of each other. It's always freaked me out how many scientists are not libertarians. I think. The main thing with that is that they, they don't think about that kind of stuff. You know, they're too busy worrying about black holes, you know, how to propel us through space or how to create some kind of vaccine that's going to save millions of lives. A lot of them are, you know, they think that the government's their friend too, you know, they're fighting over grants and money. A lot of them have sold their souls to the state whole global warming scam, I mean, even if it's real, even if it's true, they have lied about it, they've been caught lying about it, they've been caught exaggerating stuff and making up shit, and it has been in the media, people know, and then like in the 70s and 80s, they had the whole global cooling thing, people thought the world was going to freeze again. And it's like reverse 20 years later? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Don't even catch your breath trying to, you know, keep up with that. The problem with society is this progressive, quote unquote, scum, you know, this idea of making the world a better place by force. I got in a conversation with somebody the other day. We were, um, we were talking, we were talking about the big about and there's a scene in that movie where dude 
Jeffrey Lebowski. He gets a call from the cops and they say that he has his car. Like they have his car. They found it and it's in the impound lot. Let's go get it. He goes there and he asks the cop, you know, have you, you got any, any leads? Have you heard anything? Who stole my car? And the cop laughs at it. And it's hilarious. It's a funny scene because it's true. It's, it's horrific. You know what happens here. This cop laughs at him after he had his property stolen because he thinks that this cop is going to do something to help him. You know, he's probably too busy writing speeding tickets or something. So, you know, yeah, somebody stole your car. If he was using like a private defense agency, you know, he had a contract with somebody. Maybe even through his car insurance company and somebody stole his car. Don't you think somebody would be out looking for it? Maybe not his car, it was a piece of crap. They might just you know, total it out, write him a check or something. But they'd still probably have somebody out searching for those people to make them pay them back. Yeah, I mean, they got more important stuff to do, you know, they got to deal with you know, rapists and stuff, that's what they say, you know, they got this other stuff they have to deal with. And, and that's their excuse for not doing this other stuff that they're also supposed to do. And it's fine for them not to do it. If you were working through like an actual business uh, and they had a, uh, a contractual obligation to do certain things for you, and they only did some of the stuff. We didn't do this and this because, well, we were too busy taking care of this other stuff. And if you want this other stuff done, you can't worry about you know, blah, 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 this you know thing. You don't worry about the small stuff. The small stuff's there too, I and mean, that's part of life. It's the stuff that really piles up on people. And if the government's not going to do it, what's the point of having it? If they're not going to do what they even say they do, if they're not going to take care of people, protect them, um, and I, I don't mean that in the whole mother and father thing, I mean, I kind of do, in an ironic, but, um, they, they say that they're there to protect people from outside aggression and fellow citizens that just want to do them harm. And they don't really do either. They steal from their population. And yeah, I'm lumping them all together. You know, all the politicians, police, and everything. I know it's a big mess. But they, like, this giant spider web we're all called in it and they're sucking on us all these tiny little itsy bitsy spiders they're just digging their claws into us bangs they're sucking us out sucking all the blood out of us and they're pumping in their venom and it's destroying us and it freaks people out if somebody just decides to not put up with it anymore. and i don't mean to you know flip out and start you know taking out government choppers or anything. When people say, you know, I have a right to ignore the state, I don't really care about the, the homemade laws of the state. What was it Robert Heinlein said? The guy that wrote the Homemade Wars Measures. I think it was actually in that book. Take all the laws you think you might need. If I find them too irritable, I'll read them wrong. That's a terrible misquote. Um, but what do you say it is? If you feel like you have to live by laws, fine. You live by those laws. Don't make me live by them. And I just, I'll just ignore them. I don't really care. That they're it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You say that I can't smoke this plan. I can't. I can't. 
sunbathe on a certain day of the week in a certain color shorts or something. And, and I use that as a crazy ass example because I'm sure that's not awesome. I know this guy that's a cop that went around and he gave people a bunch of tickets for the most ridiculous crap you could think of. And he said he was doing it to change these crazy laws. And it was laws, you know, like that, not being able to mow your yard on Thursday. And, and he would write these little measly bullshit tickets for these people in hopes that the higher ranking officials would see how crazy these things are and just get rid of the laws. And he was doing it more as a joke. He knew the stuff would get thrown out. And I was talking with him and I was like, well, if you're doing this stuff to these people, these people are something to do with them. You know, they still got to go down to the courthouse. They still got to contact a lawyer. You know, they, or they got to go down to the, the courthouse and pay a fine or something, or, or show up in court and have to dismiss. They still have to be there. They have to do something. You're still taking something from them. It's this, this whole theft mentality. guy that's saying that, you know, calling the cops to have him arrested because, you know, they're not getting their tax cut of his legal risk. If you look at a lot of the people who get arrested for things, I read this article a couple of years ago about this guy who was on a, uh, he was a fire chief or something. He was, he was also some sort of, like, local elected official in a small town, and he had retired. Then he got busted making you know, tons of moonshine and selling. And it showed me two things. First, he was a different thing. He was probably busting people for the same thing. And he's probably been doing it for years. I mean, he's probably been using this, you know, jobs that he had to distribute and to defend himself. And honestly, I mean, thinking about it. I have no problem with this guy I'm making, you know, quote unquote, illegal liquor. I think that's a great thing. I think it's awesome that he's doing it. I just don't think that he's probably a bad person. Not because he's bad. I think he's a bad person because he's probably been doing it for years. He's been busting other people for it. Just to take care of his, you know, competition. And then when they busted him, they busted him for not paying his taxes on him. Not for, you know, not making it. You can go into ABC stores if you're up north. You know, go into you know stores that sell liquor. I guess like your regular grocery stores, and you know they they sell they sell they sell moonshine. I mean, you can sell stuff to an ABC store they will and sell to people. As long as it has, you know, under a certain amount of alcohol. And you collect taxes to give the government. Not a help thing. It's all money. It's always been money. talking about we needed government to protect us from corporations and I was simply saying well why like why do you think that like why do you think we need government to protect us from corporations what are they doing right now you know what why <laughs> why 
why do we need government to protect us from corporations? Why are corporations so able to get away from it? And I, was, I wasn't able to point this out to people. You know, they were able to figure it out that governments are nothing but corporations. They're a monopoly. And what I mean, you know, this is what I was saying earlier about not being able to just tell people directly. If you tell somebody directly, they don't figure it out for themselves. They don't figure it out for themselves. They don't really learn it. They don't know it. Tell them straight up something that contradicts their worldview without them understanding it, without them to figure it out, then they become reactionary. You know, it's like you're trying to, you know, you're trying to take something away from them. You're stealing from them. Or you're calling them a bad person because they support this immoral entity. It can be a lot to swallow. It can be tough, it can be rough. When I finally let go of the state completely, I was by myself. And it doesn't really happen instantly. You know, like, and if, you, if you're around somebody, you tell somebody something that blows their mind, like they hear it, and like the world just follows them. You know, their face, you can see the gears turn, you can see their, their brains spin. Their worlds change. I mean, you can't force it all, you have to let them find it. And I think that's why I have a hard time arguing for. I don't argue for it. You know, I don't seek out people to argue with about libertarian. I try to live with the and show them. And if they ask a question, I try to answer it honestly. You know, if they want to talk about the state, I will. If they want to talk about economics or history, I will. But if you're going to start saying that capitalism is bad and it's evil, I mean, there's really nothing to argue there. You're using their incorrect definition. I don't even have to ask. I mean, I know you are. And the only thing you can really do is go. I mean, the only thing you can really do from this point, if you're having a conversation with someone like this, is just say, okay, well, that doesn't matter. That's not what libertarianism is. Capitalism is not libertarianism. Libertarianism is the non-aggression to everyday life, apply to everyday life. And, you know, telling somebody that it's a moral argument, libertarianism is just morality. It's about the non aggression It's about humanity. And they'll look at you and they'll be like, what are you talking about? That's not a political philosophy. No, it's the anti political and this is something you've never heard before. You think that, you know, I don't know, you think Rand Paul's a libertarian, a real libertarian. That's, that's just politics. Freedom, bitch. That's where it's at. I don't know. That's my rant. Sorry about that, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm not really sure what my point was. Just that you can't force libertarianism on people. You have to let them pick it. But show them the truth. Show them how it actually is. Because it's not something easy to swallow. And if they need help, if they ask for your hand, give it to them. Do what you can for your fellow human beings. Do not, do not. This is being signing off saying, point. Don't push. That's what makes us different. Holding up.